this month I read five books. Whoop, whoop. All right, everybody's saying it. November's gone. We're in December. Whoa, end of the year 2021. And I'm so excited because my reading has really started to ramp up. Okay, ramp up. <laughs> From a normal three books a month, this month I read five books. So basically, let me be completely honest here. I know why those numbers have gone up. Those numbers have got up because I'm participating in multiple things. Number one, I have my monthly buddy read, which is really keeping me on track and I'm getting through a book in a week. Uh, and it's kind of set me up to thinking about that, that at least reading one book a week and then I'm, I'm finding time for it. I'm scheduling time. I'm kind of keeping it in my planner all the time. And that's been amazing. And I think that's been a huge change. I'm also enjoying the books more because I'm getting through them. Uh, I'm going to say quicker, but it's like actually eating the whole meal. So here I go talking about food again. What is up with me in food? Anyway, but what it's doing is it's making me enjoy the whole story. Because sometimes if you read something a little too slowly, you get disjointed. You can, you know, I start forgetting what I have actually read and maybe some of the connections. And so, uh, and sometimes I blame that on the book. I sit there and say, oh, the book was slow or the book was this. Well, if you're not reading it consistently, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be slow. It's gonna feel disjointed. Um, so I think that that's a big thing. So yes, doing my buddy reads is definitely help. Also being a part of the Murder Mystery Book Club is definitely helping um, me because of course it's pushing. You have that responsibility to show up having read the book. And sometimes, yes, I'm reading it the, well, okay, most of the time I'm finishing it the day that we meet, but that doesn't matter. I kind of do that though out of choice. So let's get on with what I read here in November. And actually we're gonna lead right into the first book for the month, which was A Test of Wills by Charles Todd. Now this is the first in the Ian Rutledge series murder mystery series and the murder mystery book club that Kate Howe is hosting and has been running is we have decided that we're going to read this series at least for the next I don't know how long uh, there's a lot of books in the series it, uh, it's written by a mother and daughter mother and daughter no a mother and son team and unfortunately the mother did pass away I believe in uh, August of this year so but there are so many Ian Rutledge uh, books that they have written. And um, this first one, I have to be honest, I wasn't sold. I, I'm so glad I'm doing this with the book club because many of them have read uh, the Ian Rutledge series already. And so they have these great insights into where the story goes. And this one had one of those issues that I've seen before in, mur not necessarily just murder mysteries, but in series where the first book is the setup, the getting to know the characters. And so the mystery becomes almost secondary. And um, it, it felt that way in this. Now, I enjoyed getting to know him. He is an unusual character. And we are going to be dealing with someone who's going through post-traumatic stress syndrome following World War I. So this is between World War I and World War II. And it's really interesting uh, how it's being portrayed and the fact that you're also getting kind of the views of the time towards it. And since you're kind of in Ian's corner and you want him to succeed and you, you do develop almost a protectiveness about him. And so when people say mean and cruel things, which would have been the absolute norm back then, um, I'm affronted and, and, and hopefully that's also a sign of the times and the whole and starting to understand more about um, mental illness and, and acceptance of it and helping people work their way uh, through it or manage it, I should say, because I don't know that you really can work through what he saw in World War I. Is he really going to ever be able to completely work through that? But we do learn a lot about his story and setup. Now, I've also been told that you could read these out of order and you just need to do one little quick little search to find out about one particular character that's interest, introduced. And I'm not going to share that with you because that is, that's kind of a neat aspect, very unique uh, to anything I've read. So getting back to the book itself, um, it's a murder mystery. 
definitely there is a murder right at the beginning. We're sent out into the countryside, and my understanding is that we're going to be going with Ian to different places. He's not staying in one place. I did feel like there was a lot of characters. Um, I felt like I was running all around. And so because of that, I was really hesitant about my feelings for this. I decided to give it a three star, which is, it's a good book. Um, but I'm really hoping that as we move on, that the mysteries become, how they're solved uh, becomes a little less rushed, um, a little less happenstance. Um, I'm hoping that there's more information. Uh, one of the techniques they sometimes used is we were in the heads of some of the suspects, and that's not information that Ian would have ever had. Uh, so I, I don't always like that so much. I want to know what the investigator knows. Therefore, I want that way I would know how he figured this out or if I've missed clues. So, and I know there's some books that are written where you're not going to know everything they know. And I need to back off on my mysteries a little bit and just enjoy them for the stories they are instead of trying to figure them out all the time. Uh, I think that's really how I need to start digesting them. So that was a good beginning to this uh this month, uh, it was great having the discussion with everybody, and I was looking forward to that. And I think that really is a, a great way for me to kind of kick off the every month uh, with that murder mystery book club pick for that month because I have something to look forward to and I have a deadline. The next one I read, I also had a deadline, but this was a net galley. And so if you remember all of our November TBR t nods to all the readathons because it really kicked off, this one definitely went for net, hashtag net galley November, which is when you're trying to focus on that. Now, I've only recently started. This is now my, this would have been my, yeah, this is my second book. My second book with Net Galley. Now, I did a whole review on this. I'm going to link it below. It is The City of Mist by Carlos, Carlos Ruiz Zafon. I am a huge fan of his. I've not read a lot of his books, but every one that I do read just really, really resonates. This is a collection of short stories. He has passed and he left this for all of his fans. And um, it's not a book that I would say start with with Carlos. I would start with Shadow of the Wind. And then I would definitely read, a, you know, a couple others. But to get his style and his, the how he writes, it is very dark. These are some hard uh, subjects that are addressed. They are short stories. It's the only short story collection that's ever really held my attention. And I don't know if it's just because of the familiarity with the subject matter and with the author. Um, and it just felt like going home. So it was really lovely. To, to read. Its publication date uh, was here in November. I'll put that down below because I can't remember what it is right now. I want to say the 23rd of November, but I'm not 100% sure uh, when it was published. So it is out there. And so I really, those of you who love Carlos Ruiz Zefon, I don't think you'll be disappointed with this other than knowing that it's the last we're going to get from such an amazing, wonderful writer. So then we get into the week of Thanksgiving and the perfect book for that. And that was my buddy read with Fiona over at Reads and Eats. And that was The Little Book of Huga uh, by, ugh, I don't know, him. Him. Okay. Um, this book was big a couple years ago. Of course, the whole idea of Huga and that whole uh, idea of coziness has really made its round not only on book two but in interiors and uh, tons of books have been also written in and around it. Um, this was really a great read particularly for this time of year and I have to say I was not getting into any type of winter feel. I was kind of like oh, why is Thanksgiving here already and I was not really excited about Christmas coming up. But I read this book, it got me so much in the mood. It goes through different aspects of the uh, Danish life and how Huga is incorporated in it. Even talks about some of the offices. There's a lot of things that I didn't know, particularly about skin, uh, about uh, design, lighting design. There's a couple, uh, right at the beginning of the book, you talk about these lights. And I remember, you know, I've seen them everywhere on YouTube and all around. And I thought these were recent 
uh, designed lights, I thought, you know, and, but come to find out they've been around for years and it's all about the, the dispersion of light in your home. Um, it's funny, it made me look around and go, yep, I've got some of these already here. One of the things I can't have though is candles, and of course candles is a big part of it. Uh, we're in an apartment and we can't have burning candles. Um, so that's a, that, that's a bit of a downer, but at the same time, there's a lot of ways to make those other lights. I can see me picking this up again and again. I also think there's a lot of life philosophy about simplicity, about uh, that calmness, that creating a home that is your sanctuary that you can come home to and feel safe and warm. I think it's, uh, there, there's just so much in there, but it's a great read, easy to read, and it was fascinating. So that was my nod to nonfiction, and it was so nice talking with uh, Fiona. Fiona loves her hot chocolate. She has her own little hygge nest herself. We talked about it. Um, and she just, she, you can tell she embraces it. And she's been to Copenhagen as well. I've been, but I was so brief, I can't even say I really got to see anything of Copenhagen. Uh, but I would love to go back and I definitely want to go back. Uh, and then this was uh, something I've been listening to since October and it's on Audible and it's The Anatomist Apprentice by uh, Tessa Harris. But it was a real miss for me. I loved how much of forensic science we're talking about. So this is Victorian time. We have an American uh, anatomist who is called in after a suspicious death. Of the female character, uh, written by a female, but I don't understand. I don't know if it was the guy that was doing the narration, if his portrayal of her voice and therefore kind of acting whenever she was speaking just made her really, really seem like she needed to be coddled and, and, and you know, taken care of and she wasn't very strong and, you know, and the main character was like, insta love with her and protective of her and everybody was in love with her actually by the end of the, the whole thing but i really every time that character came on and again i don't know if it was the narrator's choice of voice and it just didn't work or if she was really i feel like she was written this way too and i i just i was not enjoying any of it uh but ultimately it was such a miss for me I didn't enjoy the story. I just felt like it just kept dragging on. I kept checking going, how much longer do I have with this? Um, so that was not one that I would recommend. I only gave it two stars. I do applaud the narrator. He had tons of voices. There was a lot of people involved, uh, a lot. Um, so it just, no, I won't be continuing with that series. Uh, and you know, I've had it on my TBR or to be listened to my TBL. <laughs> uh, for a while so it's gone won't be continuing and then the very last one that I read at the very end of November and that's because it also has a publication date and there will be a completely standalone review on this is the Dark Queen watching by Paul Doherty this is a net galley release due December 7th I believe is its publication date and it is going to find out third in a series yeah, a series I haven't read anything. Uh, so really need to be a little bit more careful with what I request on that galley. However, saying that, this stood alone just fine. It is third in the series of the Mar Margaret Beaufort series. And it is based in, again, medieval England, which I absolutely love. It's 1471 uh, that year. Uh, very dark, very gruesome, very wow in your face. But overall, really enjoyed it, and I was happy that I didn't have to read the others, but it has totally piqued my interest in Margaret before. So that's it for me. Uh, five, five books. Um, that's pretty good. I'm hoping to do, I think I have seven on my uh, December TBR, so I've got to push it even a little bit more. But two of those are going to be Audible books. I just need to start incorporating them more often in my life. But I have to say, joining up with Buddy Reads and being a part of a book club and then now having the I don't want to say pressure because that sounds negative, but having those deadlines with NetGalley has really gotten me to be reading and I'm enjoying the pace I'm reading. I'm reading about a book a week with one audiobook going on as well. 
Um, again, I only read one book at a time, and I just find that I'm able to get into the story a lot better, even if it gets disrupted, you know, but over a week's time, that's been like a sweet spot for me. So I'd love to hear what you're reading. Have you read any of these books? What did you think? Are any of you even curious of any of them? But do look out for my uh, review on The City of the Mist, and then also my review on The Dark Queen Watching, which will be coming up very, very soon if it's not already posted. So thanks for tuning in. Can't wait to talk to you soon. And on to December we go. Remember, keep turning those pages.